Today on The Grid, join me and Kuna the Rocket Man for our first How Would I Edit Your Photo show of the year. We've got some just lovely giveaways and it all starts in just 30 seconds. The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Well, howdy, everybody, and welcome to The Grid. We are live and joining me via satellite. Well, via satellite internet from a snowy cabin somewhere up in who knows where, over by North Carolina, Tennessee, or Georgia, his, in an undisclosed location, the real rocket man, Eric Kuna. Well, hey, Scott. How's it going? <laughs> well, it's going pretty good, Eric. It's warm here in Florida. How is it up there? It looks kind of snowy. I mean, it's um, it's not snowing yet, but it might uh, later. So uh, it's uh, going good. It's not that bad. Not that bad right now. All right. So. I know. But I have my I have my uh, Buccaneers. Uh, I was going to so say I can see you got some Bucks gear on. All right. <laughs> All right. So it's going yeah. good. Hey, so uh, interesting. Um, uh, so uh, Tom Brady, you know, Bucks quarterback, mm -hmm. lives in Derek Jeter's home. So he's renting yep. his home for from Derek, Derek Jeter. And Derek Jeter's home is up for sale. Yesterday I was reading an article about it. He's only asking $29 million. So it's a pretty good <laughs> so deal. So, so Eric's looking at picking up that, that place when he gets back. But uh, <laughs> anyway, glad to have you guys here today. It's the yeah. first show of the year that we're doing. That is our... Um, how do I edit your photo? So uh, in the last couple of days, I've asked folks to send me uh, regular images Hey, we're back. Sorry, we had a little hiccup with our Facebook feed, but we got it fixed, so we are back mm -hmm. with you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, Eric can't see uh, the shout-outs, I don't think, but... Uh, 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 not yet. Not uh -huh. yet All right, I can see him. We've got Glenn from C -C 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 Cold Calgary, <laughs> right? <laughs> Karen's here from Indianapolis. Carl's from Quebec. JC is here from Key West, where it's nice and warm down there. Lenworth's here. He says, hello, Grid Nation. Glad to guys, uh, have you guys here. Uh, we are going to have a uh, an interesting show. So we've asked people to send in. <laughs> Uh-oh, I hear Kuna dogs. Oh, yeah, the dogs are going crazy. Um, I, uh, uh, we asked a couple days ago, we asked uh, viewers to uh, send in 
uh, uh, unedited images, so images straight out of the camera, and I'm going to take them from beginning to end and just show you how I would edit them if I had taken the photos myself. So that's what we're going to do today, uh, and uh, we've got some giveaways real quick. I'm, I'm just going to have to guess what they are because I, I don't really know. But I'm thinking it's, I'm thinking it's Elytra, maybe. I bet I bet we'll give away a platypod. Uh, a platypod, something. yes, yes, we're definitely going to give a platypod something. I know I got a gooseneck. I know I got a Lucy Goosey gooseneck. So we're going to be giving one of those away. Uh, we've got a copy of Street Photography Assignments. We're going to be giving this book away from our friends at Not Rocky Nook. This is by Valerie Jardine. So she's a very good photographer, by the way. And uh, my mask, we're going to give away my, no, probably not. You probably already have a mask. You don't need, probably don't need another one, do you? All right. And no. we're going to give a copy of Boris Effects Optics, which is an incredible plug-in. Just ridiculous, cool plug-in that we're going to be also giving away as well. Uh, also, we're going to have a, uh, we're giving away apparently a slick pick portfolio. So uh, those are for, uh, they are a company that makes portfolios for photographers, not graphic designers. Like all the other ones are kind of for graphic designers, but you can put your photos there. These are made from the ground up for photographers. And they're really awesome. I switched over to them last year, and I love it. They've done a great job. and makes it very, very easy. But the, but the particular uh, one that we're giving away gives you a graphic designer to help you build your website. They just do it for you. So, so you don't really need the help, to be honest with you. But, you know, just in case, it's nice to have somebody. Make it just the way you want it. But I did mine in like an hour. It's like, and believe me, I'm no coder. I'm no web genius. <laughs> so if I can do it, anybody can do it. All right. Uh, Eric is in the snowy north uh, up there, up the somewhere near Tennessee and North Carolina and Georgia. Up there yeah. living that Kuna life, watching football, <laughs> living living the, uh, the we were, Bucks we dream. Were watching, we were watching football this weekend. That's oh, man, sure. it was great. It was great. I yeah. can't believe the Bucks. I can't believe I'm about to say this sentence. The Bucks are going to the Super Bowl. In Tampa Bay. In Tampa. It's the first uh, history-making. Yep. It's the first time all, the home team is playing at the uh, – but what's interesting is uh, they was reading that they're saying it's not a home game because none of the people there will be from Tampa. <laughs> Yeah. Right. It's, but still, it's, all, it's still in Tampa. Yeah, That's it's still, still in special. Tampa. So it's exciting. It's a lot of fun. So, and yeah. the the Super Bowl has been in Tampa before. Uh, you know what was weird? There were there were years ago, and this is a number of years ago, where it was in Tampa two years in a row. Do you remember mm -hmm. that, Eric? It was yeah. one year, and then the next year was the Super Bowl again. Very weird. Anyway, I uh, had a great show for you. I have a wild story for you after the break, but let's go ahead and get to some images, okay? All right, yeah, again, these are sent in by fine, fine folks. Uh, let me uh, get it open up here. Here we go. So here is our very first image. Let me get my brightness where it should be. My brightness is kind of low on my computer, and now my computer's asleep, so I've just done everything bad I could do. Hang on. Where's my brightness setting? It's just moving on me. There we go. I got to get my bright. Okay. So here's our, our uh, first image. Uh, and it's very nicely done. It's a good photo. So uh, definitely worth working on. Now, if, if you don't, it, now this is a JPEG. Uh, so uh, it's, it's kind of, I don't, I can't apply a profile, which is what I would normally do to a, oh no. Is this, can I apply? Maybe it is raw. All right. Okay. I thought I don't know why I thought it was a JPEG. Uh, so the first thing I would do is go up here to profile and, and apply Adobe Landscape. Not just because it's a landscape, but Adobe Landscape seems to make almost everything but portraits look better. So I, that's my first move. I just do it all the time. It's like it's it is a better profile for making things look better. I mean, you're starting on you know a better better look. Here's Adobe Color which is not bad, but it's not great. And then Adobe Landscape is seems to be way better. So that's my go-to. You could just hit the auto button, which is actually, it's okay now. We, for years, we told you never touch it, but now it's okay. You can hit it and see what it does. Look, if you did nothing more than take this photo, choose the landscape and hit the auto button, I'll look at the difference. All we did was choose the profile for landscape and click the auto button. And it is tremendously better. It is tremendously better. Now, we could take it a little further now that we've done that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, switch back to our regular view. 
All right, there we go. Okay, now, the first thing I would say is it's a little hazy right in here and stuff. So let's go to dehaze and drag it to the right. And you can see how it cuts through that haze really nicely. But there's a side effect that, that uh, dehaze has, which is that it adds a lot of blue to your photo. So when I put a lot of dehaze on something like I just did, look how blue those mountains are. It's the middle of the day. They wouldn't be blue like that. So I'm going to go up here to temperature. And I'm... Hey, Eric, I can, I can hear a... a, a yeah, echo. I got it. Okay. I'm having go. to go. I'm having to go get the stream because we're we're still having uh, the Facebook is having problems. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. And I'm going to drag yeah. this slider to the right a bit to get the mountains looking kind of like they should. Now, when I do that, of course, it affects the clouds and stuff too. That's okay. We're getting more towards how the how the white balance should look now you could take the white eye balance eyedropper let's click it on something that's supposed to be kind of a neutral color see where that puts us see i like what it did to the mountains the mountains look more realistic but i think it's a little too yellow so i'm going to pull it back a little bit maybe somewhere in there maybe add a little red into it to kind of offset it all right, so we're we're getting there. Uh, the one thing that we could also do is I would bring out some texture uh, right here. I would bring out uh, I would increase the amount of texture, which look how sh much sharper it makes the image look. It just it's the bring out the detail slider, and then I would add a hint of clarity just to kind of bump up the. Uh, well, I my my recipe that I normally use is a lot of texture and a little bit of clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, now one more thing I would do. Now, uh, on my screen and maybe on yours, the foreground is quite dark. And there's all kinds of ways to fix that. But honestly, an easy way to do it is get the graduated filter tool. This one right over here in the toolbar. Oh, we're in Camera Raw. It works the same way as Lightroom's Develop Module. It's the same sliders in the same order that do the same thing. So if you're a Lightroom user, everything I'm doing is the same. So don't go, oh, he's in camera raw. It's like it's the develop module. It's the same exact stuff. So what I would do here is I would grab the graduated filter tool, which is the, you know, the one in Lightroom, it would just be up here. But I'd grab that tool. I would increase the exposure maybe a stop or so. And let's drag from the bottom up. And you see how it brightens that area? It's way too bright. But do you see how it does that? Maybe to right there. I'm just looking at the photo and kind of figuring out kind of where. But it's too bright. Let's just bring it down a bit. Maybe something more like that. On my screen, that looks like pretty, pretty decent. I don't know. It's looking good. I mean, it's looking good here from what I'm saying. Okay. And then when you're done, just click yeah. back on the basic panel. Um, the, a couple last little minor things you could do. This is such a nice picture. A couple last little things you could do. Uh, is to blue up that sky a bit, add some more blue to the sky. You can do that by going to the color mixer down here. Go to the luminosity tab and drag the blues to the left. And watch how it rich makes the sky, the blue in the sky, richer. So you might do that. Just kind of make the clouds have a little more, stand out a little bit better. Make the sky a little bluer. And as a final minor finishing touch to an already great picture. Well, I'll do two things. One is go down here to the effects panel, go to vignetting and drag it a little bit to the left just to take the heat off those edges to my, the number I generally take it to is minus 11. And I think we're, we're pretty good. It's La looking good. The last thing I would do, yeah. I would go add sharpening. Uh, so let's just go and do detail, and it's 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 at forty by default. <laughs> That's trash. Let's take it up to about eighty, maybe ninety, and get it really nice and sharp. All right, and then let's see what we can see our before and after. So there's the before image on the left. There is the after image on the right, and. You might could just go to the base. I don't know what I just did. I didn't mean to do that. Go to the basic panel and just maybe bring up the overall exposure just a tad like that. Maybe make it a little brighter. Uh, and I think, I think we're pretty good there. 
So. Yeah, I mean, it looks also, you know, so Scott, there's a question uh, or maybe a comment here that you could address from Jerry. Sure. And it's saying um, that um, uses the texture slider in every photo, but have found uh, that uh, too much has a very negative impact. Do you find the same thing that too much of the texture slider? I find that, that negative. I find that every single slider in Lightroom, if you put too much, has a negative yeah, effect. Exactly. If you overdo anything, so if you do too much dehaze, too much clarity, too much texture, too much exposure, too much contrast, any of those, they all have a negative effect. So right. you always have to. But but I I'm at. Plus 37 texture, I, I don't think you're going to see any negative effect from something like that. If I went to 80, yeah, it would look crunchy. And that's the word that we would use. If, if you add too much sharpening, it looks crunchy. I mean, so so I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, my magic number is 42 on the texture slider, actually. For, well, I'm, here, I'm going to bump it up to 42 and see. I can do 41 or 43, Eric. <laughs> it won't let me do. <laughs> Stupid slider. Well, let me do 42. All right. Anyway. But, well, uh, there you go. There, there you go. go. I Let's... mean, yeah, from, from what I can see, I mean, it looks uh, great. I mean, but that's a typical, I think what you showed there on the raw file, that's a typical edit that we would do on a raw kind yeah. of travel landscape photo. I mean, yeah. it usually comes out with that flat kind of tone, and then you're, you know, toning the image. Yeah. So, yeah. uh Pretty straight ahead stuff. And it's a it's a great shot to begin with. Yeah. Oh, it's a very nice shot. It's very yeah, very nice. Great shot. Let me grab another yeah. one. Let's look at another image. How about let's let's do something very different. Let's do this photo. All right, here we go. All right, also a very nice photo. Nicely done at the right time of day. Now, for the photographer, I would just say, my gosh, you were so close to having perfect light. All you had to do was have your subject tilt her head in this direction over here because the lighting is split right down the middle of her face this side's lit this side's not if you had her turn her nose and her whole head a little this way oh the light would have been perfect and you'd have had a little light hitting her cheek over here it could have been just oh it could have been so nice um but still it's a very nice picture so i don't want to take away from it but just like a tip going forward uh have her turn now she can turn her head and still look back at you and oh man your lighting would have been on the money but i salute you you're shooting at the right time of day you did not really crop her legs in a bad way like but it but the photo's crooked so let's fix that uh this is not a raw file oh it is a raw file so let's go to adobe portrait since it's a person and it kind of gives you a better starting spot uh let's fix the 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 just just crooked i mean you can see look at this it's just a little crooked so let's go to optics and i'm going to turn on uh use profile corrections so that's going to fix a little bit you can see it right there look it fixed some of the barrel distortion that we were getting from uh the lens because you're at you're shooting with a wide angle you're at 44 millimeters so it's you know it's a little wide not not much but you can see you have the distortion and then we're going to go to geometry uh, which would be called what's that called in Lightroom it's not called geometry it's called lens correction and we're going to hit the A button for auto and see how that does yeah that did it look at that two clicks and your image is straight and not only is it straight but you remove the distortion from the lens so that's nice okay the one thing I would do since we have that lighting issue is I would get the brush the adjustment brush I would uh, let's I'm going to zoom in a little here all right, and I'm going to light the other side of her face because we really do need to have some light over there. So let's bring up the uh, adjustment and let's get some light over there. Right over. That's too, way too much. Woo. <laughs> Sorry. Let's just get a little more light over there. Now, it, it, I, we can light it, but we can't add the wonderful shadows as easily, you know, but, you know, that's at least that puts some light over there. And let's see where we're at. All right, that's better. So I'm going to just show you just that. Well, so what we've done so far. But I was hoping, let me turn off the uh, uh, the little eyeball here just on the brush that we just did. So look. See how it just brightens that side of her face? Now, when I did it, I was a little sloppy and I, I spilled a little over onto this side of her face. We don't really want that. I added another pin, sorry. 
We just want, there we go. We don't really, we want just a tad of it there. There we go. No. Now, her eyes, uh, her sockets are a little dark, you know, because it's late in the day and stuff. So let's add another while we're here. Hit the plus sign. Let's make our brush smaller. And let's go in and brighten her eyes a little bit. Just the, just both sockets. That whole area there. There we go. Now, it looks a little maybe too bright. Let me pull it back just a hair. You don't want to look like she's like got that. I slept in the sun with my sunglasses look. Okay, I think we're good. All right. Now, another thing I would probably do is I would probably lower the vibrance a little. Let's hit, well, let's just go hit auto and see what auto does. Ooh, auto did a nice job. Auto's gotten so much better. It used to be so bad and it's gotten better. But it cranked up the vibrance by 20. I think I would go the other way to get her skin tone looking a little better. A little more, I would say, a little more modern to what we're doing with skin tones today would be to just back off the, the vibrance a little bit. Uh, and then, what you could do, I'm going to try this. I don't know how this is going to work. But I would go, let's go to the radial tool. Let's hit invert, make sure invert's on. I'm going to darken this and I'm going to try to create a light on her. And the reason I'm thinking of doing this is because you want it to be about her. It's not about the building. The building is the background, right? It's the environment that she's in. You want her to be a little uh, lit a little better. So let me hide the overlay. So now she's got some light right where she is. She's got a little pool of light. And I'll show you what that looks like. So there where everything has the same tone and now... You kind of have her. So we can also decide how dark or how light we want that area. Let's make sure I've got the, uh, let me turn the overlay on so I can make sure it's selected. There's the overlay. Let's make sure it's selected and we can decide if we want it maybe not quite that dark. But do you see what that did? Do you see how that just doing that little thing kind of, because all the light in the whole picture was even. And now it's really on her. Now that it's on her, we can also decide how big do we want this, this pool of light to be. We could make it a little more concise towards her. Bring it in here a little bit more. Now, her, her arm does fall a little in the shadows over there. So if you wanted to, you could take the brush, and just a tiny bit of exposure, and just kind of paint over her arm right there to bring it kind of into into cohesion and then lastly I don't think we need to do anything with the texture or anything let's just go and add a little bit of that vignetting I did earlier let's go to effects let's go to vignetting and let's drag to the left just a little bit on the edges because the edges don't really who cares about the edges let's hide them and I, I mean it's it's better I didn't do a kick butt job on it but you can see her face is brighter. It's well, it's uh, more well lit. Um, if you really wanted to retouch her, like if you wanted to do some retouching, or actually, I mean, there's not much to be done, to be honest with you. I was going to say you could go to, uh, you know, sharpen her eyes and all that kind of stuff. But I, I do want you to look at her face, though, because I might have gone a little too bright with the light on that side well I could still fix that right we did that with the brush which one of these is her face that one I think it might be a tad too bright I did a half let's do a third there we go oh that's much better holy cow yeah I was a little too hot on that a little little too hot on the uh there you want it to look natural and it was I think I went a little too far but uh that's it and you want her let's let's zoom in one more time but that way her face isn't so shadowy. And uh, overall, that uh, you got a little more... I don't know what just happened. <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's, that's our next one. All right, we're going to take a short break. Uh, when we come back, I've got a wild story for you. And we're going to look at some more photos people sent in. So don't go away. We're live here on The Grid. We'll be right back. Howdy folks, Moose Peterson here on a beautiful balmy morning at nine degrees up on Lolo Pass. This is the 
the path that Lewis and Clark took west. Winter time is a marvelous time to get out and photograph critters. You know, they're, they're at their best many times when it comes to their pelts and they have different kind of plumage. They're just busy doing that survival stuff. And you've got this gorgeous Christmas kind of atmosphere everywhere. But how do you take those pictures? More importantly, how do you do it comfortably, having fun and photographically successful? Because there's so many pitfalls that are out there waiting for you. And that's what I'm gonna deal with. We're gonna talk about things like clothing. You can learn, you don't dress like me because I don't get cold. How do you prevent that? How do you go out and work with your gear in the cold weather? How do you bring it back in at night and not start that condensation cycle? How do you make sure you have a stable platform? What clothing do you need? How do you take care of yourself physically? And so much more. I mean, I'm gonna cover a ton of this as well as showing you the photographs, the do's and the don'ts, the possibilities, the light your imagination, get you out here in the cold, embrace it, and have a lot of fun. So come and join me Photographing Critters in Winters, exclusively here on Kelby One. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we're back, Scott, here with Eric up in the mountains. Eric, the mountain man, Kuna. It's here. Hey, a couple things. First off, just want to mention, I don't, uh, you know, last week we wrapped up the, uh, was it last week or the week before we wrapped up the travel photography conference? Mm -hmm. Was it, it last, was last week? week? It was last yeah. week. Okay. So last week we wrapped up the, uh, the travel photography conference. It was awesome. It was a great hit. People loved it. We had a great time. It was, the feedback was phenomenal. Uh, and we just had a great time. So thanks first, thanks to everybody that came and helped to make it such a success. It was so much fun. We had great instructors. We had a, a great curriculum together. Um, one of my favorite comments, I did a pre-conference workshop. So the day before the conference, I did a, a, a workshop called um, What Makes a Great Travel Photo? And one of the comments was, it was worth the whole conference just for this one class. And I'm like, all right. So, because we, we work really hard on those classes. We really wanted them to be impactful and stuff like that. So it was, it was, it's great. As a teacher that, you know, that's like a home run. So we were thrilled. But uh, we want to, uh, we did announce that we are doing our next conference is coming up in March. It's March 17th and 18th. It is the Wildlife Photography Conference. So that is coming up and we've put together a cast of incredible instructors, including Moose Peterson, among others. So we're very excited to have Moose on board and a bunch of other top wildlife photographers. And that is coming up Oh, I said 17th and 18th. It's March 16th and 17th. Excuse me. 16th and 17th. It's going to be great. It's, you know, same thing. It's two tracks, two days. Just incredible Yeah, like training. a deep, deep dive into wildlife photography. So yep. if you're looking at, like, you know, two days to immerse yourself in and getting and mastering all of the whole gamut of wildlife photography, um, that's the conference to be at, which, which is what I think is so cool about these conferences is, you're able to really dive way into that topic. So yep. it'll be really cool. And it's something that we can do now, you know, even in the quarantine, you know, we can, we don't have to yeah. be around a bunch of people. It's okay to be around animals as long as the animals yeah. are wearing masks, I think is important. So it's weird to see a giraffe with a mask, but you know, you know what it is with the giraffes getting up there to put it on them is it's challenging. Yeah, it's very challenging. So that's why yes. you have to, you hold out yes. food when they come down for the food, you put the mask on. Anyway, it's coming up. So uh, we hope you go check it yeah, out. Yeah, if you go to the Kelpie one live. Yeah. yeah. If you sign up for it now, you get the, like the, the super early bird pricing. So mm -hmm. that's it. One forty nine, and you can come and spend uh it's really two and a half days is what it winds up being. Cause you got the day before and then you've got the, uh, the main two days which is where you've got like 20 classes so it's incredible value and it's a lot of fun and it it, it all actually works astonishingly well so <laughs> but uh anyway just thanks for everybody that came made the travel one so much fun all right so i have a real quick story it's kind of wild so um i'm home uh last week well that's <laughs> like every week and uh, my wife came to the office, you know, uh, she was had to do some stuff here. And, and we don't actually work out of the office. We all work out of homes, but we come in for stuff like the grid and stuff. And we all stay the heck away from each other and uh, all that stuff. You know that we, we mask and social distance and all that. But we're not here very often. So my wife comes in. She comes home and she says, honey, there's a package for you. 
and uh, it was uh, for an international package. Now, my daughter is really into uh, Korean K-pop bands, so sometimes I will order her stuff from Korea, and it takes forever, forever to get here. It just it takes months and months and months. So I'm like, oh, good, it's it's something for her. So I open it up. I'm excited to go surprise her with it, and I open it up. It's not for her. It's for me. I'm like, what is this? I open it up, and it's an award. And I'm like, what? I open it up, and I won first place in the landscape category for the uh, International Photography Awards. I forgot I even entered. <laughs> it was months uh, months ago when I entered, and uh, I won first place in landscape. Uh, with uh, uh, you've seen the shot that I've, that I've, sh I've shown it uh, numerous times of the uh, the fishermen in China uh, at dawn, you know, uh, on their boats and stuff. Yeah, that it won first place. And here's the really exciting part. You know who won second place? Peter Lick. Peter Lick won second place. So although he's way more successful and way more famous than me, I finally beat him on something. <laughs> anyway, it was very exciting. Yeah, you did it. You and there was it. a lot of big names there, like Sal Sincato won in the portrait category. And anyway, I was just I was just thrilled and tickled and stunned and uh Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I was really jazzed. I was like, yeah. it's just the last, you know, it's like 10 o'clock at night. I'm opening this back. It's not even thinking it's for me. And I, it's an award. First place? What? That's a that's a major award. I was I was really, really jazzed. And I still am. And it's like a week later. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm still jazzed. It was like, maybe it was a Friday night, I think, maybe. But Isn't anyway, that the best? It's like you totally forgot you even entered. Yeah, I forgot you even entered. <laughs> and uh, what's interesting about their competition is you can enter one piece for free. And then you have to pay after that. I just entered the one shot. I thought, you know, now, but here's what this is. I'm bringing this around not to just like be a bragger, but, but, but do you remember the first episode of the grid this year? And I said, I gave ways for you to make the most of, of 2021. And I said, enter photography contests, because even if, if you don't win, they're not going to send you a letter that says you're trash, throw away your stuff. They're not going to do that. They're just going to go, oh, thank you for entering. We're sorry you didn't win this time. You know, and believe me, I've gotten those letters. I know what they're like. So um, they just, they thank you for entering and say, hey, please enter again. That's all they say. So I said, you know, you got to enter contests. You got to enter competitions. There's no way for you to win if you don't enter. So anyway, I was kind of excited about that. That was my my yeah. surprising yeah. story. And there's, a, there's a lot of congratulations with then Scott Hinton was saying, congratulations, Scott. Why didn't you bring that, uh, open the show up with that? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know what? Our stream was having problems. I guess it was better. Hey, Cheeky uh, Nando gave me some love. <laughs> and oh, yeah. And put a little Cheeky, a Cheeky logo. <laughs> it says, yay. Thank you, Cheeky. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, Deb. You guys are very kind. Thanks very much. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm just, you know. Uh, anyway. Did you show the? Did you show the photo? Uh, no, I have it here. I can show you. Hang on. Just give I think me. A, a lot of people just want to see the content. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I I don't have the website. If you give me a minute, I can actually find the. Let me find the website. Yeah. Hold on. Hold yeah. on. Um, one sec, because I I think I can get the uh, the link to it. Okay, here we go. Now, cheeky Nando said you should sell it for ten million dollars. Yeah, that only Peter Lick can get away with that. Yeah. Right. All right, so here it is. Here, here are the awards right here. If you can see my screen, it's this photo right here. First place, Scott Kelby, that photo right there. Sweet. I got to tell you, though, some of the other photos are really good. I'm like, are you sure you picked the right one? But anyway, they did, and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that they did. So, so yay. I think this will maybe make it bigger. There it is. There's a bigger version of it. So first place, yeah, that, the gold award. Yeah, that, that is a weird one. Uh, D. Hayes is asking... Uh, uh, strange that they didn't notify you an email prior. You know I what? I thought they would have. They might have, but it probably went into my junk mail. Oh, uh, it got filtered, maybe. Yeah, it got filtered because I use this very sophisticated email filtering program that Eric turned me on to. It's awesome, but occasionally you do miss stuff like that. But yeah, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've actually been, found that, Scott, that it's um, that filter I'm having to watch because it's starting to filter way and way more of the stuff that maybe I want to see. Yeah, so <laughs> I have to train it. So the way this email filter works is, if you've emailed somebody, 
then they'll let them back through. Like if you email to somebody, they go, oh, but I filled out an online form. So I never actually emailed mm, them. I yeah. filled out the form and uploaded the image and all. So anyway, I just couldn't be more jazzed. <laughs> So anyway, that's that's my my story for the day. All right, let's go and find uh, another image to edit. Uh, ooh, you know what? This is an interesting one. This is um, all right. So here we are, and there's uh, a couple of little. Can you, can you see my? There we go. There's a couple of little tweaks that would have made this just a stellar shot from the start. So what would the tweaks be? get down lower like shoot from a lower aspect ratio um shoot a little later in the day so the light would be more favorable but i will say this they did they did a lot of things right number one the car is turned exactly right in the right position you can the the wheels turn nicely and here's the thing look at the sides of the car there's not a bunch of junk and stuff i mean it's the the light is actually as good as it's going to get in the day right i mean it's like you have to wait most car shots are taken like an hour before sunset so they actually did a really nice job this big shadow here is not helping you we're going to get rid of that uh, but those are some things you could have done like that ways now let's let's start off by getting our optics right. So let's go to the optics and turn on the profile correction. It doesn't have a matching profile. It doesn't know what camera you shot it with, but that's baloney because it does know your ISO and your lens and all. So we're just guess. I'm gonna say that you shot it with a, let's just guess. Uh, I'm gonna say you shot it with a Nikon. <laughs> I don't know. Who makes a lens, Eric, that's 16 to 80? 16 to 80, ooh, that's a weird one. Yeah, it didn't really do I mean, much. Let's go to geometry and see if that's even going to work. So, because usually the the uh, lens corrections work best if you apply a yeah, it's not. It doesn't even find anything to do. But what it is to me is it just I'm going to use the rotate thing. It just looks a little crooked. So uh, Nikon makes a sixteen to eighty. All right, so it probably was the Nikon, right? Yeah. I know Canon doesn't. Yeah. All right, so let's just crop this in a little bit. Hang on, let me just hold the shift key. And we'll crop it in a little bit. There we go. So first off, you got to get the, the image straight. All right, next, um, let's just go over here. There's, it's not, uh, it's, it is, it is a JPEG. So let's hit auto and see what that does. Auto, I don't think did oh. did us any any help on this one. Let's undo that. Also, Fuji and Sony make that too. So oh, it could, could be, be a Sony. Fuji and Sony. Yeah, it could be Sony. Could be a Fuji too. Who could knows? Could be a Fuji. All right. So uh, let's let's see. What we're missing here is detail in the front of this car. We're missing detail. I like that the interior is dark. It should be. But you're missing all the detail in here. So that's one of the first things I would probably address is, is well, let's just get the, let's get the highlights down a little bit. The highlights are a little hot. Let's uh, shift, double click the whites and blacks to kind of get our tone set. Um, we can increase the texture and the clarity a little bit to make it. Metal looks great. You know what looks great? Clarity makes metal look shiny. So, you know, obviously you want it to be shiny. So that's clarity is really great at making water look shiny. And it's making, um, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, water shiny or uh, metal <coughs> shiny. So either one of those. All right. So now I'm going to get the adjustment brush and I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit. And let's bring out this detail in here because this stuff. Let me zoom in here. This is critical stuff on a car. Like you want to see all that grill in there and everything. And I'm doing kind of a sloppy job with it it's spilling over. But I'm going to just try to clean up some of the spill. But you want to see all that detail in there. All this detail over here. And usually I'll go into the sides and get the lights here. Now they turn the car lights on too, which is another smart thing. I mean, this person's no dummy. They know what they're doing. Uh, so the car lights are on. There we go. So now we, we've done just a little bit of bringing out detail, but I think it's going to help a lot here. Let me show you. You can see the detail coming out in that front and you always want to see that. All righty. Let me think what else. Oh, we got to get rid of this big, ugly thing over here. I want to see if there's anything tonally to do. Um, the sky is not awesome. There's not a lot we can do about that, but except for maybe add a gradient to the sky darken it a bit and just make the sky you know have a little bit more of a graduated look to it that would help maybe how's that that's a little better 
And while we're here too, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a vignette. As you notice, I pretty much do that to everything. Just take the heat off the edges. And I don't know, I don't know, but my eye is drawn to this back side right here, which is not really where you want people looking. I think I would go in and darken that a little bit with the uh, uh, adjustment brush, just darken this back part of the car, make it a little more even. Might even drop this just a, a tad right here in front. Those whole areas don't need to be quite that bright. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, we've got to add a little sharpening while we're here. Oh, we can add the sharpening in Photoshop. You know what's really killing me is this big, this big thing here is driving me nuts. This I don't know even what that is. Thank you. That so, was the one that's driving me nuts. <laughs> yeah. So let's go see how we're going to get rid of this. Let, we could, let's going to try. We're going to try content aware fill. I don't feel great about it, but let's try it. Let's just go to uh, fill content aware. Three, two, one. Well, it didn't do badly over here. But uh, so now let's try it again. Let's circle this up and just try it again. Content aware fill. All right. At this point, I'm going to switch to the patch tool. So the patch tool will let me take the area that's still left. I'm going to circle, draw a lasso around it and just drag it over someplace else nearby to patch that up. Something like oh, it's, that didn't do so well. All right. And it's because it's at the edge. Let's try another thing. While we're here, instead of choosing uh, normal, let's choose content aware for the fill. Let's try that again. So let's go to content aware. So I'm, I'm still using the patch tool, but there's the normal way to do it. But when you're on the edge, it's like touching the edge. Sometimes switching to content aware will make all the difference in the world. Let's try, see if that does. It did. Look, boom, done. Just switching that from normal to content aware fixed it and i'd go back to normal and fix this little area right here uh, i just made it worse let's try one more time that's not good oh i guess i gotta go back to content aware because it's right on the edge when you're on the edge is where stuff gets funky all right that's close enough okay and still now, removing that shadow was a lot i mean that, that was huge right <laughs> that was huge now there's a stick coming in from the side over here there's little stuff you just need to kind of clean up uh there's some like i don't know what those are but let's clean them up there's some sticks and just ugly stuff that's none of that's helping your photo the other thing is the ground is fairly bright for no reason so let's go back go to the camera raw filter and let's just darken that ground area let's get the brush Let's go down, I don't know, a stop, three quarters of a stop. Make our brush bigger and let's just darken the ground. There's, that's not helping us. It's not doing anything for our shot. I just accidentally moved it up. And at the end, maybe we can go and sharpen it to death. Sharpen, unsharp mask, apply a bunch. And, and there you go. So, oh wait, is there, looks like there's a spot on the car. It's either on the car or on my screen. Yep, there's a spot on there. Yeah, there's some little spots and specks like dust stuff. And you can get rid of some of this little junk over here. These extra reflections that aren't helping your shot. Um, clean up some of this stuff down here with the rubber stand. It's not bad though, but literally a couple little changes like lowering your, lowering your, uh, Getting down on your knees, shooting from there would really make the car feel big and aggressive. It would really help a lot. Uh, but you did a lot of things right, so I, I like the shot. There was one more thing I wanted to do. What was it? I just was thinking about it as we were talking. Oh, I want to show you the before. Here's what I wanted to do. Let's go open it up again. Let me go grab that photo again, if this is it here. Let's return it to its original state. So there's the before and there's the after. Let's back it off a little so you can see. So just getting rid of that uh, shadow did a lot. Oh, that shadow and then darkening down the, the, the foreground there. Yeah. yeah, it's something. All right. Hey, uh, you know, somebody somebody was commenting in this. Uh, um, 
it was actually Jennifer was commenting. Um, I like how uh, Scott tries different ways until it's good, especially when you're doing like the cleaning up of stuff. And I I think that's a a good point to make when you're doing edits is sometimes you're trying things and you're seeing what you like or trying effects. And then you're like, well, that's not working. I need to go here. You need to go there. Oh, yeah. So undo is a big part of my workflow. (laughs) Yeah, all of our I yeah. and mine too. Hey, so there's something else. Do you see this white rock or something over here? I think I'd get rid of that too. So like over here in this sagebrush or whatever, there's a big rock. Let's just see if content aware fill. Yeah, there you go. Get rid of that. But uh, I like where you're going with this. So that I, th- I think the I think our photographers is is really on the on the money, and and it was kind of an easy fix. There was it was already looking really good, but an hour from now, get down low. Ooh. Hey, we got a nice comment from Studio A. Studio A said, the photography travel conference was one of the best virtual or live I've watched. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. (laughs) Yeah. All right. We we, we strive to make them better every time. Yeah, and and we do have a list of things that we're going to do to make the next one even better. So we, you know, Christina uh, had basically... Watch the list, watch the comments, watch everything. And say, what can we do to take it up another 5%? Like, cause it's, 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 it's an ongoing thing. We're always trying to make it better. Whatever we did before, the next thing we have to do has got to be better. It's kind of our mantra. So the next one we do, the wildlife one, we'll be applying all the cool stuff that we learned, uh, from producing events, uh, at the travel, we're going to apply to the wildlife. So yay. All right. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, let's look at some more images. Cause we got some stick around. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer living in Los Angeles, California, and I'm a fine art artist. I love Sneak Peek because you can host all your photos online. You can share the best one through albums with incredible privacy settings. For example, you can just share an album to like three people or for just a number of hours. They have amazing watermarking on the fly where you can just change your mind and watermark and redo the watermark or take it out and it's instant on all your photos. Having an official portfolio is so vital today. Now they have an amazing launching deal where for just taking the basic subscription we're offering now, which is roughly $15 a month, you're going to get a professional designer to do your website for you. All you have to do is fill in a form with a few data and you're good to go. A designer will design your website for you. So if you don't like web design, this is a great opportunity. I think we're better off taking photos and learning how to do HTML and CSS and getting the most perfect website ever. I mean, even if you were to go the route of WordPress, which I did for many years, having a WordPress is free, but you need to host the WordPress. And a good hosting service is between 10 to $20 a month. So all you have to do is click the link below and get the offer. You will get this special price, which is 50% off for the first year, but you're gonna get it for life. So get it now. I love my Sleepic website. I love the business that it drives me and I want the same success for you. Get it now. For over 20 years, leading software developer Boris FX has made its mark on the film and television industry. Now, for the first time, our Academy and Emmy Award winning visual effects tools are available for photographers. Welcome to Optics. Optics is a collection of 160 filters for Photoshop and Lightroom. Simply apply the effect and launch the interface. Optics features thousands of customizable and creative presets for photo editing and effects layering. The top tools include lens flares for cinematic looks, realistic night skies with star fields and moon generator, add lightning with on-screen interactive control. The Easy Mask tool creates masks with just a few clicks. Optics is available now as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom and includes the standalone application for Mac OS and Windows. Get Optics now for 15% off. Visit borisfex.com, add Optics to your cart, and apply coupon code KELBY15. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we're back. Scott here in Mountain Man, Kuna. In the mountains. Uh, oh, some, we're still some, here, yeah. Some real quick uh, 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 comments here. Susan says, thanks for these great live shows. Love them. Always learn so much. Well, thank you, Susan. Uh, Diane says, so looking forward to the Wildlife Conference. Well, great, Diane. We're looking forward to having you there as well. Uh, Circle CR says, can't wait for the Wildlife Conference. Love the travel conference as well. Thank you. So, uh, well, that's great. 
Okay, yeah. guys, we don't have much time left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip through, uh, maybe see if I can get through 10 images. Now, I'm not going to be able to take them the whole way, but I'm going to just give them a quick, you know, here's we go. So let's start with this one right here. Cute little kid. Um, I really love the background color. The bad news is it's not real, <laughs> right? Because he's yellow. So this is a white balance issue. So it was probably, you know, uh, what you call it? Uh, halogen lighting, you know, regular indoor lighting and that kind of made things funky. So uh, you could fix that by probably grabbing the white balance eyedropper tool. It's in Lightroom, it's in Camera Raw, same tool. Just click it on the background and now his skin tone looks more regular. And now it, it went a little, you might just go a tad back like there, you know, because I doubt that wall was that whitish blue. Um, and then just throw a little light in his face. Just let's go um, go to the brush tool and pump this up just a bit and uh, lighten up his face just a bit. Let's add one more of these. Let's click one more with a smaller brush and let's do the eye sockets. And this is a very common thing we need to do if we're not lighting and not getting light in there. And... Uh, cute kid and you're done now can i show you something i want to try let's go and hit open i'm going to open it now i don't know if this is going to work very well but let's go back and do it again let's open the same photo let's go to the default i'm going to open it now let's use uh, just click any of the selection tools like the quick selection tool <clears throat> pardon me and click select subject so that's going to let photoshop select him for us so he's selected and it look it got his hair and did a pretty good job let's go copy let's go to the other photo and let's hit paste in place so when i paste it it's going to paste it in the exact same place i got it from the other image now you've got the cool the nice background behind him and you've got regular skin tone on him, which is totally cheating. I get it. Uh, the other, only other thing I would do at this point is let's just merge them together and let's crop it because there's no sense in showing all this wall back here and stuff, right? And then lastly, because I love that yellow wall. And then lastly, maybe we burn in the edges a little bit. We go to the... Uh, camera raw and this time we're gonna maybe burn him in a little more than we normally would oh wait 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 i have an idea <laughs> i have another idea duplicate the layer go to multiply mode so you have the rich color in the background and here's what we're going to do i'm going to draw a rectangle and i'm going to feather it to death so i'm going to make the very soft let's go like will it let me do 300 pixels it will hit delete Actually, I might be able to do a circle with this. Let's try this. Let's do a circle. That's not a circle. <laughs> Thank you for not saying anything there, Eric. I know you wanted to. <laughs> All right, big circle. Feather it to death. So I'm softening the edges. That's what the feathering does. I'm going to do 400 pixels. Let's do 500. Let's just go nuts. And then hit delete. There we go. Because now look at that nice gradient that you have behind him. So look what adding that did. Kind of put a spotlight behind him. Right? Let me do that again just so to show you. Duplicate the layer. Go to multiply mode. Draw a big circle. Feather it to death. And hit delete. That's it. And you've got this little circle of light behind him. So, so there is, uh, let's go back and get the original and we'll see where we're at. Here's the original and we'll go reset to default. Oh, that is the default. So there we go. There's the, your, your, that's a huge transformation. And, it, and you got a nice background <laughs> now too. Yeah. So he's kind of, anyway, it's a nice shot though. Cute kid. All right. Let's, mm -hmm. let's roll on. Shall we? Yeah. Let's grab this one. And I'll try to do it quicker, but I just couldn't help myself. So, uh, was this raw? Yeah, let's try landscape to start. 
It already made it bluer. Let's hit auto. It's already better. Let's hit texture. Clarity. Maybe a tad of dehaze. Uh, the sky is a little... It's going to look fakey if I make it much bluer, to be honest with you. I wonder if I just increase the vibrance. Nah, it's bringing out the blue. It's a cool shot, though. Super cool shot. Um, what I might do... Now, this is just me. Mm -hmm. I might rotate this a little bit. It just looks a little funky to me at the trajectory that it was going. I think I like it better there. And now, generally, we don't like to have the image this close to the edge. It's not terrible. But honestly, in reality, here's what you would want to do. You really would ideally like it. I'm making a duplicate of the layer. I'm just dragging it back a little bit. <laughs> so I know that's cheating, but, but it's, it's a psychological effect we have when something's too close to the edge. Like anything that's moving that's too close to the edge makes us feel a little, uh, a little um, what you call it? Uh, uncomfortable so yeah just yeah we, we want we want somewhere for it to go yes we want, we want, we some want room somewhere for it to go travel yeah. and now i in photoshop i would sharpen it to death and that's probably more sharpening than it needs but anyway it's cool shot very cool yeah shot. very cool shot. i love the vapors 35 right yep that's screaming with some vapors very very nice nicely done probably taking it in air show which is not is a challenging environment to shoot in but you did a great job and it's a really nice shot so that's what i would do and let's look at the original which is already a very good shot so mm -hmm. let's just go uh yeah so there's your original and a little bit of work, you know, we worked on it two minutes. Yeah. And uh, there you go. All right. Yeah, I love the moment. Love the uh, vape coming Oh, off yeah, the, the vapes. Plane. We love the vapes. Love Loving the vapes. The, love the vapes. All right. This is an interesting one. Now, I don't know exactly what the photographer was trying to do, so I'm just going to have to, you know, do my own thing. But here's what I would do. Let's, uh, uh, let me, I, let me reset this. So there's the original. Let's hit portrait and auto. All right, so that's looking better. So let's just look at just what portrait and auto did. Look. Oh, they're they're wrong. They're on the wrong side. There's the before on the left. There's the after on the right. So that is good. I might just tweak this a little. I might open up the shadows a little more. Add a little bit of texture, but you don't want to do too much because you don't want to get her legs looking, you know, funky. Uh, add a little more contrast and let's open it because I think here's what we got to do with this thing. I think what we need to do is get a selection tool, go click select subject and let Photoshop do its thing. So Photoshop did a really good job of selecting her and the, it's not a scarf, whatever that thing is, the fabric. Let's press command J. So it's just her now on her own layer. Now, it did miss part of that wall there, so let's go back. I'm gonna go back to the selection. Do you see where it missed this little area right here? Get the magic wand tool, hold the option key and click in there and get pick, let it pick up that stuff. And it also cut off a little of it, so it's not perfect what it did. It's close, but it's not perfect. Let's just uh, add this stuff here, sorry. Add, I'm holding the shift key to add these areas in. Add part of her wrist in. It didn't do it did a really pretty good job, but it, you could see it missed a couple little spots right here. Let's get it to get rid of those. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's it's close. It's in the ballpark. And it also missed this. I'm holding the option key when you see me taking away from this selection and the shift key if I have to add something. All right, that's going to get us in the ballpark. Now we go to the other layer. There we go. That looks better. First thing that I would do is let's do this. Let's add a new layer behind her and fill it with white to get rid of all the distracting kitchen, kitchen appliances. Then I think I would make her go higher. Now, you ha I don't know what to do with the floor. I don't know what you were thinking of doing, 
So what I would probably do, I guess, is maybe we lower the opacity of this white layer so I can see your other floor. And let's just hit delete. Let's select that area and hit delete. So the show, the flow, the flow, <laughs> the floor shows through. So now you can see the floor. There is some funky thing over here. Let's go. Uh, let's go to content aware fill and see if we can fix it. Okay, it's not beautiful, but it'll get us there for for now. The other thing I think you have to do is now this is weird. She was over that background, but I don't see any shadow down there. You would have a shadow down there, wouldn't you, Eric? Yeah, we would you? think. I mean, in real life, there isn't a shadow down mm -hmm. there. I don't know if the shadow is falling on the background. Let's go look at the original. Yeah, the shadow was falling on the wall behind her. Mm -hmm. If you wanted that shadow back, you would have to do that before you moved her. Or, or, <laughs> this is getting complicated now. Oh, I don't yeah. have time to do it, but I could get that shadow moved up there and in there. But I think what we do is I think if you want to make it look like maybe you duplicate her, fill her with black, move it down, squash it, blur it a lot. <laughs> yeah, and then lower the opacity or change it to multiply mode and then lower the opacity a little bit. Just so you have something there, right? Some some little right. something there. So it looks you like gotta ha, you got to have depth and dimension. Yeah, yeah. you got to have something there. So anyway, I'm not sure what you were trying to, to do, but I think that's something. <laughs> that, that's something. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Judy's asking, can we get a sneak peek at the presenters for the wildlife conference? So I'm waiting for some confirmations on some folks, uh, Judy. Uh, but... Um, there's some, I mean, there we've got some very, very famous speakers and some wonderful, wonderful, some people we've never worked with before. So we're, we know that they're great instructors, but we haven't worked with them before. So we're excited to be able to bring some people in. But uh, so, so Judy will be announcing that hopefully by Monday, we'll have everybody locked down. But, you know, we've had some invitations out there and then people have, well, I got to check my schedule. I'm not sure. You know, so just trying to lock everybody down. But I know who we have. Everyone's given us a nod. Like, yeah, I want to do it. Let me see if I can make it. And let me, you know. So I would say by Monday, we'll, we'll make the official announcement. All right. So Willie says, if I knew 20% of what you knew, I'd be happy. And if I remembered half of that, I'd be ecstatic. So, so Willie, here's the thing is, some of this stuff, you just, after you do it for a while, you just, you're like, I've been in this situation before. Like I've been in this situation where I had somebody on a bad background and you have to get them off. But the problem is, Willie, if you don't use Photoshop all the time, you forget. And I hate to admit this, but there's been times, Willie, where I've been working and I'm like, how do you do that? And I have to go to one of my own books and look it up because I haven't done it in so long. Like I wrote it. I wrote a book like five years ago and I go, I think it's in that book. And I'm like, Oh, there it is. So you do lose this stuff. You do forget it. And because I don't do this every day, like every day, I'm not trying to make a shadow for somebody, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not doing compositing every day. So you have to remind yourself or stop and look up stuff. You know, it's like, um, so I, I did a thing on, on Son Kelby one where I did, what was it, Eric? Like 200, 300 little videos that are a minute a piece yeah. on every little thing in Photoshop. So if I yeah, forget, it's just like help. Yeah, it's like help how files. do I like? They're like, how do I invert a mask? I know it can be done, and I don't want to watch a twenty-five minute YouTube video to figure it out. So I have, how do you invert a mask? How do you hide the mask? How do you, you know, I have all these little, it's just one little topic, and you watch it. It's less than sixty seconds. I go there sometimes too. I did them myself, but sometimes you just forget. It's just you know, it's, it's, it's. Uh, it's fun getting old. Okay, let's let's whip through a few more of these, and we got to go. Uh, actually, we're gonna take a five minute no, not a five minute break. We're gonna take the last break at sixty seconds, I think, and then we're gonna whip right back and and wrap wrap up some more. Here we go. So let's take a break. We'll be right back.
Hey there, my name is Brett Malley, I'm a KelV1 instructor, and you should take a look at my latest class on advanced landscape compositing. In this class, we really take landscape compositing to a whole other creative level, where you get to imagine it and create it from all the different pieces of landscape images in your archive. So check it out right here on KelV1. Would you believe us if we told you that you could fit studio lighting in your pocket? Well, Lytra has made it possible. Lytra is a global award-winning brand that designs and manufactures professional-grade camera lights that are compact, rugged, and waterproof. Whether you're using Lytra gear in a photo studio or underwater, Lytra's mission is to provide content creators with flexible and unlimited lighting tools that can mount on any camera, anywhere. Their lights come with a high CRI or color rendering index, making them some of the most color accurate lights in the industry. Due to the lights compact and rugged design, photographers are able to use the lights in ways that their studio lighting never could. Lytra has also made multiple lighting accessories available to fit your every need as a creator. Whether you're shooting portraits, nailing a product shot, or even flying your drone, they have got you covered. Lytra enables photographers and filmmakers to focus on their craft and create something beautiful. What will you create? This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free and we even have a special audio only version too. So sign up today. Hey everybody, uh, we're back. Uh, somebody wrote, Warren wrote, use it or lose it. And that that mm -hmm. is exactly right. With with Photoshop and with Lightroom, the more yeah. you use it, it just becomes second nature. And if you don't use it for a while, you got to go look stuff up. Lewis says, go, going to Scott's books is a great way to refresh your brain. I know, because I have to do it myself. Thank you very much, Lewis. And uh, Matt says, I, I just have a Scott shelf above my computer. <laughs> All right, thank you, Matt. I thank you, my kid's college fund thanks you. You're you're very great. Thanks. All right. Uh, I got, I'm just going to try to whip for you a few of these real quick. There's all the, all the photos are good today. Look at this photo. This is, I think this is a really good photo. All right. Let me tell you what I love about this photo. I love how each person has got a, such a great expression. This is the thing that we talk about so often that it doesn't like the people's photos don't tell you anything about the people, but just looking at them, you can see, you know, like their personalities and stuff. I love the photo. I think you did a lot of great stuff with it. Uh, just a couple of things would have made this killer. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of tips next time you're shooting uh, uh, some folks. Uh, don't chop off their their uh, wrists. Don't chop them off at the wrist. Like they're all like double double amputees. So just changing and getting their hands in there would have made a big difference or go up higher. So that's going to be what we're going to do here is we're going to have to get rid of the this. We're going to have to cut them off a little more here because we, we kind of cropped in a bad area. All right. Also, the sky isn't what this is about. It's about them, right? So let's just get it in on them. Now, one other thing that would have made all the difference in the world, you so did the right thing by putting the sun behind them. Look at the nice highlights in their hair, right? And using a flash. It's just the flash is too bright, way too bright. So if you brighten down, if you take that flash down, so what I'm gonna to try to do here, which I'm not gonna be able to do that effectively, is lower the brightness in their face. So first thing is let's pull the highlights back. That'll help a bit. That'll take some of the heat off. It'll make the sky look better. I'm gonna go in with the adjustment brush. I'm gonna lower the exposure a little, and I'm just gonna to try to darken up their faces. Whoops, that's way too much. But unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get that shine away without doing some, some serious retouching. Which we can do, but we just don't have enough time. Uh, and we'll darken this up. We don't need to. We don't want their shirts to be brighter than their faces. And we can add a little vignetting at the bottom. Just a little quick finishing move. And I think we'll be in, in good shape. But it's such a good photo. You really want it to be its best. There we go. Let's take a little bit of, of the edges off. But just lower that flash a little. Oh, man. Because But you did everything else really, really well. There's not much we can do. The sky, you know, you can darken it up and, you know, add a gradient to the sky would certainly help. And you know what else we're going to do when we do the gradient in the sky? We are going to add some blue. 
There we go. See how I dragged the blue, the white balance blue slider over a little bit to make the sky a little more interesting. And I think, I think you got a nice picture there. So, all right, very nicely done though. I, I will say this, all our photographers today, I think did a very nice job. Let me grab another one. So uh, all of our photographers. So guys, this is another one where, and this is a really good shot too. I love it. Um, if we could have done a little bit more right here, you cut off them all at the ankles. So we're going to have to fix that first. We don't, that's like a, a big no, no. So let's bring it in tighter and let's get, let's get this up higher. So we're not getting their ankles, get them below the knees is good. All right. So that's pretty good. We, we have a little bit too much up there, but that's okay. Now, here's one thing you could really do that would make this great, because I think this is probably a family, right? So move everybody way close together, because they look like strangers, right? Nobody's touching. Everybody's kind of like, stay away from me. If you moved everybody in, 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 it would make all the difference in the world. Now, you could select each person and move them over, which is probably what I would do if like, if, if they were paying me, I would pick them up and move them over, pick her up, move her over, pick her up. Cause uh, you have a tool called the object select tool that would work amazingly well to pick him up, put him on his own layer and then fix the background. But we're gonna, we're gonna deal with what we got. So let's go to uh, auto, see where that puts us. I think your biggest problem is you shot this in the shade Perfect. Well done. Very, very good. But that also means your white balance is going to make them look um, kind of bluish. So we're going to go towards yellow and make their skin tones look better. So that looks good. Let's go over to the, uh, the uh, vignetting. Bring that in a bit. And I, I think you're, you're pretty much there. Uh, you could go under his hat a little bit with a... Uh, I generally do that if someone's wearing a hat and brighten right up under there and just pop a little bit of light in everybody's face. Hers is okay. Hers, oh, she's so cute. Uh, and maybe him. But I'm telling you what, if you got them closer together, there is this tool called the object selection tool right here. And what you would do is say, I wanna select him. And it will probably do a pretty good job. Yeah, there he is. So you got to get him up. You got to move him way over and then you got to mask him out, right? So it's, it's, it's a lot of work to do, but it, you could so super do it because then what you do is you get the quick selection tool, right? And you select him and you go, all right, well, oh, wrong layer, select his body. And then what you do is once you move him over, then you hit delete over him to bring him forward. But you see how much better it looks when they're close like that? Then you got to go clone him out. So that's, it's, this is not an easy job, but I'm telling you what, it would be worth doing. So I would go in here on this fence over here behind him and let's bring this fence in and bring in that stuff. I'm telling you, it could be done. You gotta do it one more time because you got two of him again. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It can be done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's just gonna be a bit of work. I mean, there's no getting yeah. around it. It's, it's you gotta, you know, you don't want the repeating patterns and stuff like that, but look how good it looks when they're close like that, right? And you gotta fix the hands. And I mean, all that stuff's gotta be addressed. But when you get everybody close together, it makes them look close. It makes, it gives you that, hey, it's a family look, all right? Um, Studio A asks, hey, Scott, when you crop shots like this, do you prefer to use standard aspects ratio or to what looks good best? I, I, I am from shooting sports and having to keep the same aspect ratio. I've programmed my mind to always keep the same aspect ratio. So makes it easier when you're framing too. <laughs> All right. Anyway, nice shot. Let me see if I can knock out maybe one or two more. We're, we're, we're so over. Um, this is a nice one. Let's look at this shot. Look at this. That looks nice. Is it raw? It is not. But let's hit auto. Uh, auto helped a little bit. Uh, I think what we could do here is add some contrast to make it more interesting. Cut the haze. So let's go to dehaze and cut that. Woo, here we go. Texture. 
clarity, a lot of texture, a little bit of clarity. Double shift, hold the shift key and double click whites and blacks to make sure we've expanded our tonal range. We can pull back our highlights to help that sky a little. Look how pulling back the highlights helps the sky. Just that right there, look. It's getting there, right? Oops, I just hit the bad button. All right, let me fix that. Hold on. Ay, ay, ay. Camera ride. It's a joy. It really is. Oh, come on. I forget which button to hit. When things go bad in camera raw. All right, now flip it. Oh, I did it again. Wrong. Sorry. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. I'm kind of new at this whole thing. Uh, flip it and then reverse it. There we go. Jeez, that took a long time. Now, you can even work with the after over here, but here's what I would do next. Go get the graduated tool, darken that sky, add a nice gradient. Look what that did for the sky. Yeah, that brought your that made your sky epic. And I think we're pretty good. Now you can clean up some of the stuff like there's something right there. And I just hit something terrible. There's something right there. Just kind of clean up the beach a little bit, but I think you got a good shot there. All right, let me look at another one real quick. Give me a sec. How about this one? All right, so we got a couple of issues. Uh, one is that the, the, the kind of the geometry is a little funky. Please be a raw photo. Yes, I'm going to hit landscape and apply my profile. I'm going to go down to optics and I'm going to turn on the profile corrections. And it was shot with a Sony. So look at that. That fixed part of our problem. Now when we go to geometry and hit the auto button. I don't like exactly what it did. I'm going to scale it down. Okay, that's better. I'm going to rotate it just a tad. Let's scale it a little bit more. All right. So there's. we want to keep as much of that photo as possible. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to crop. We're going to get the crop tool and we're going to go here, here. Oh, can I just explain what I did there? I, I know I'm way over time, but let me just, I, I, I'm kind of moving fast. So I want to undo all this. What I did with the scale was once I hit, oh, um, once I hit to adjust the building, it, it cropped so much of it. It did an auto crop and it cropped so much of it that by using scale, I can bring back the areas it cropped away. And it says, well, you're gonna have this weird shape, right? That's okay. Because I, I, by scaling it down, I can see the rest of the photo. Now I can choose where to crop it. So I wanna keep as much of that building over there as possible. I'm gonna keep, I know I'm gonna have some gaps, but that's what Content Aware Fill is for. And the sky. So look, now I've got most of it saved. Let's click open. And then here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the magic wand tool. I'm gonna select that area, hold the shift key, select this area. I'll go over here, select this area. Now the trick to making this work is one more step. You go under the select menu, under modify and choose expand. And what you're gonna do is take a look at me here. Your selection's in place, but it's only in the white areas, the areas that are missing. You're going to expand that selection out, outward into the photo by four pixels. That's the magic number, four. We're going to expand it out, and that kind of gives Photoshop a heads up of, oh, that's the stuff you want, this other stuff. Because right now it's just all white. So it hit expand selection. That, again, is under the select menu, under modify, expand selection. You're going to get much better results when you go choose fill and you have content aware on watch, I bet it's pretty decent. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Look at that. Come on. Now, what do we do last? Edit sky replacement. Go to sky replacement. We're not going to use that sky. Oh, we actually could, we could. <laughs> Uh, I have my own skies I put in here, or you can use, you know, if you're a Kelby one member, I gave you skies. There you go. Boom. Done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't know if that's the sky you would actually choose, but I will show you the before and after where we started and where we ended. 
So let's go to the original and hit reset to default. Now we didn't do much to the actual image, so we can go do that now. We could go to, you know, camera raw. And of course what you would do is uh, hit auto to get us kind of in the ballpark, open up the shadows, add our texture, add our clarity. Yeah, and lower the vibrance. It's looking too punchy. A lot of times when you do that stuff, it just gets a little punchy. And now when we hit OK, there we go. So there's here's our before and after. And if you want a more realistic before and after, we'll turn off the clouds. There you go. Yeah, but you got you got to do the clouds. Yeah, you got to add to. some clouds. Yeah, you yeah. You got to. You got to. I'm not sure if that's the clouds I would choose. I just, you know, it just yeah, looked kind of gloomy and overcast. Something. But yeah, it needs, needs something. something. But, you know, if you don't like the one you chose, throw it in the garbage. Go to Sky Replacement. I just drove past it three times. And um, go choose a nice, make it a nice sunny day. So that looks fakey. Sometimes you just got to get, that looks all right. How's the next one? There you go. It's a happy day at the castle. <laughs> so uh, Larry H. is asking, where are the skies that you gave us? And uh, that's in the uh, toolkit. So uh, Kelby One members, if you go under the uh, perks uh, on your membership and then you go to toolkit, they're in the toolkit. There's so many things. So every Christmas, yeah. We do 12 days of Christmas where we get our instructors and I do some and Eric does some and all. We give away our stuff and sometimes it's books and it's graphics and it's clouds and stuff like that. And um, and it's just free for, for Kelby One members. Just go to the, uh, to the uh, what's it called? The Creative Toolkit. Yeah. And we put them yeah. there all the time. All right. Yep. I'm going to do one last one. Gosh, we have, there's, there's really two I want to do. The other one's really so hard, I'm scared of it. <laughs> All right, so here's our Machu Picchu shot. Never been there, but I, I kind of recognize it. Let's go to Adobe Landscape as our starting part. Guys, do you see the difference there? Look at this. All I did was chose Adobe Landscape, and everything's greener and lusher and better. And then hit auto. All right, uh, let's pull back the highlights a bit more. Get some more detail in the sky. Uh, let's shift double click on the whites and blacks to make sure that we've expanded the tonal range and the vibrance again I might be a little too vibrant increase the texture bring out the clarity Ooh, even right there we're getting a, a sharper crisper more detail and more separation a little bit more dimension in the photo which I think is nice so let's kind of you can see the before and after there it, it really is pretty nice. So let's go back to our regular view. And here's, there you can see, just adding those things made made a nice difference. And then I come at the very end here with a little uh, vignetting. Ah, just a little, just enough. So that minus 11, look how little it is, but it does make a difference. And then you got to get rid of what is this, somebody's ball cap? Right? What do you think, Eric? Um, I can't totally see it yet. All there right. we go. All I did was... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. All I did was make a re rectangle. And now, since I'm on the background layer, the shortcut is hit the delete key and just hit return or enter, and, and that's gone. So, but nice shot. Finish it off with some sharpening. Look how sharp it is, and we haven't even sharpened it yet. Yeah. And ka -chow. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> That's a nice shot. You got yourself a nice shot there. All right. And the last one I'm going to try is terrifying, but I'm going to try it anyway. I don't know what I'm going to do. And well, uh, while, we're, while we're talking about that, I mean, um, uh, do they have uh, the prize winners? Yes, we do. Yeah. So congratulations to Mike Litke, who won the Platypod Gooseneck. Uh, Scott Hinton, you won the Street Photography Book. Boris Effects goes to Judy Lindo. And the Slick Pick goes to Matthew West. So 
Yeah, guys, there you go. There you go. And then uh, just uh, email gridprize at kelby1.com and uh, claim your prize. And um, then there was a question here from Denise uh, was asking, is sharpening or clarity better? Uh, they're, they're completely different things. Yep. yep. Sharpening needs to be applied to everything. Uh, clarity increases mid-tone contrast. And like I said, it, it, it kind of changes the tone of your image. It makes it more gritty. So it's very, it's just a very different thing. Sharpening, you always add. Clarity is a choice. It's an option. It's like, should I make it look grittier? Should I make my metal shinier? Should I make my water reflecting and kind of stuff like that? All right. So this is so funny. I'm reading this comment and Jennifer, Jennifer K says, I have time. You can take as long as you need. Also, my photo has, hasn't been on yet. So well, there's tons of photos that I'm not going to get to. I mean, we had so many entries. But Jennifer, I just the one I said I'm scared of is yours. So I just opened it on screen. This is Jennifer's photo, unrelated to you posting that comment. It's a beautiful photo. It's so nicely done. But it's also, because of it's dark and dramatic, it's very challenging. So I'm going to try. I'm just going to give it a, a whirl here. Let's try uh, Adobe Landscape. And then let's hit auto and it's going to overexpose it to death, to death. But here's why I still think it was worth doing because you can see the lights kind of interesting here and look how nicely the glass looks. So let's undo auto. And we know that we want to bring out some of the detail on that glass. So first let's do this. Let's hold the shift key and double click on the white all right, that looks good. Double click on blacks. That looks good though. Both of those are okay. Let's add a little bit of texture and clarity. You knew those were coming because that makes the bottle look shinier. The highlights look better. I want to increase the highlights. So that's the little reflection on the bottle and on the glass. Let's see what it does. I don't know how well it's going to work. You got to be careful. You don't go too far. You'll clip it. But I think bringing that out is nice. Let's carefully open up the shadows and see if it gets too crazy. Yeah, we're not going to go very far with the shadows. However, I'm going to take the, the brush, increase the exposure, and I'm going to try to get some light into this glass right here. There we go. Now you can see some of the light in the glass. And there was also some light over here that was kind of nice coming in. So I kind of like that. And we can decide how bright we want the glass and how bright we want that other area. But so I don't know if this is about the bottle or the glass or both. So I'm just, I don't want to get carried away. And then I think we've got to get rid of, but without cropping, because I don't want to lose the space. We've got to get rid of this reflecting board back here. So let's just take this whole side, hit content aware, see what it does. Voila. And then it's so nicely done to begin with. I just hit the unsharp mask and we're done. And I think that's a very, I can't go to full black screen, but that's a very nicely done shot. It's supposed to be subtle and dark like that. Uh, I don't know on your screen if you can see, I can see detail in the back of the bottle separating it there. But if you can't see it on your screen, what you could do is you could go in there with a brush and very lightly, just a little bit of, dark brighten the back of the bottle so you see definition back there you might have to go to shadows to bring up that edge see how i'm bringing up the edge so you can see a little of the back of the bottle that that's an an optional step and i think i think it's crooked though jennifer i think we're gonna have to rotate it just a hair because i think it's crooked you know how eric and i are about crooked yeah it was, oh yeah it was crooked Eric and I are really sticklers about that. <laughs> and I think we're good. Oh, well, Jennifer, you took a beautiful shot and uh, just a, it didn't require very much in post. Um, and again, so I'm showing you how I would edit it. And Jennifer, you might look at that and say, oh, no, I wanted it much brighter. I want it, you know, I, I don't know what your intent is, but it, I, with all of these, all I can do is edit it the way I would edit it. So that's just, that's what I would do. But I, I love your picture. I think it's, it's beautifully done. It has a very artistic, you know, not an art. It has a very painterly feel to it is the word I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, do we have anything else we have to do that's important? Eric. 
I think we're good. Yeah, we did the prizes. We're all good. Okay, I'm going to ask you a couple of rapid-fire questions, Eric. Ready? Here we go. Yes. Number one, should people go sign up for the Wildlife Conference? Absolutely. Should people go join Kelby One to learn from over 800 classes on photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom? Why aren't they a member yet? I don't know. Where would they go to do that? KelbyOne.com. When will we be back in this studio? <laughs> We'll be back here next week. Next Wednesday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Yeah, uh, thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you to all of you for taking the time to watch us. Also, thanks to my crew here uh, at the headquarters for coming in today and making this happen and staying the heck away from each other. And we will see you guys. And hopefully Mr. Kuna will be back from his uh, holiday cabin. I, I will. I will. All right. I'm great. On the road soon. So. All right. All right. All right. We'll see, see you guys. See you guys. Thanks, Eric. Take care, everybody. We'll catch you next week. Bye.